question I have for you, Philip. Have you ever considered being an underwear model for like Calvin Klein or anything? No, and would not. So the pink underwear thing, it seems like you caught a lot of flack for that and you finally burned them out. <laughs> what was the reaction from everybody? Did we see, not see everything that people were talking about, you walking around in, in the pink underwear? Well, no one ever talked about it necessarily directed me to directly to me when we were there. But for me, uh, I didn't mind doing it because I knew that I would get tremendous amount of uh, television time, camera time. I mean, for the first three weeks, you know, it seemed like it was all Philip everywhere. I was in Ellen DeGeneres, uh, you know, um, what was the other one? Uh, the Soup, every week, had a lead-in with me. I made the uh, Bullseye for Entertainment Weekly. Uh, I don't recall any of the other contestants being involved in that out of 18 other people. So for me, it was a win-win. Uh, they, you know, for Survivor, they got tremendous viewership. For me, I got tremendous exposure. And I think, as we'll see very shortly here, I just signed an, uh, an alliance agreement with the Diane Fossey uh, Gorilla International Fund to help them raise millions of dollars to help preserve the 480 uh, gorillas that are still left in the wild to prevent poachers from going in and shooting them and gathering up 800 tra traps a year that are set for the gorillas, the silverback gorillas, the mountain gorillas. So obviously there was something there that I was doing that related to them that they wanted to form that relationship with me and starting tomorrow morning you'll see on the Diane Fossey site um, a way that people can go in and contribute under the Philip Shepard campaign and all I'm asking them to do is to follow me at my site called The Closers on Twitter and follow me and then we're going to continue to build that so we can raise millions of dollars to help protect and preserve those gorillas in the wild as she started over 40 years ago with the Karasaki Research Center in Rwanda. It's very cool. That's very cool. Is it frustrating to you that even though you have someone here to verify that you were a former federal agent, is it frustrating that people don't buy it still? Doesn't, I haven't even, I don't know what people buy or, or don't buy. All I can tell you is I serve my country. Uh, and I'll just show you briefly here. Uh, Are we the first to see this? Uh, you will be the first to see it in terms of... Uh, well, we got this on tape. We're going to be the first to see this. So this, you're going to see that I am a retired United States Army soldier. Do you see and, this? And from, and from that, I was able to get my first position with the Defense Investigative Service, which has, oh, by the way, been published on my website for years, and uh, that I was a special agent. And you had a special agent in the house tonight. So if people want to believe what they want to believe, then that's their prerogative. And I'm not going to try to fight what I can't control. And I can't, but I can control how I respond to it, how I feel about it. And I'm at peace with you know, who I am and, and what I've achieved in my 53 years. Give us some insight into those meditations you were having out uh, on the show. Some people mock them, but you took them very seriously, finding the feathers and that type of thing. Give us some insight into those. Well, first of all, um, I'm very blessed to have had uh, some exposure early on in my life to uh, what we call the Nimapa School of Buddhist Meditation. And philosophy to how you can approach life by being one with life and living in the moment. You don't look to the future, you don't look to the past, you just be in the moment, you float with the moment. So I was able to do that and so here I am out there without a cell phone, without a computer, without a laptop, basically isolated, ultra-sized for my own tribe because they're too busy looking up to, to, to Boston Rob. So that gave me an opportunity to reflect on a lot of that and appreciate the nature. And when I came across a feather, it reminded me of my great-great-grandfather, Jessam Herring, a full-blooded Cherokee. And uh, I thought, why not? Why not? So is the Philip Shepard we saw on television the real deal? In what respect? Is that really you? The, 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 the Philip Shepard you saw on television was a guy playing a game. That's like asking me, the guy who threw the elbow in a basketball game, is that the real you? Essentially, at that moment in time, in that game, what you saw was a guy who said, go big or go home. I went big, and I'm number two, to a guy who played four times, 117 days, for me to come in number two. I think there's only been one other African-American to go that far in the game. And he won. So I'm quite proud of the way I played the game. What's the reaction from fans been like? I know you addressed it in the live show that they all love you. Yes, tremendous. I have numerous fans that connected with me on Facebook. I have people connect with me on Twitter. Anyone can go out to Twitter and click on mentions. 
and you can go read for yourselves what people say about Philip. We love you, Philip. You're a great player. It's like a 98, we love you. Two, we don't like you. So it's like, it's so warm to get people out there who understand that I was in a very unique situation with a guy who's a pro. That's like saying we're going to take a professional basketball player and have him play with a junior college player. I mean, that's what Boston Rob is compared to everybody else out there. And I love the guy and his way of playing the game. And I learned a great deal from him. But notwithstanding that, I was not going to turn those people around. So I played the cards that I had. And he said to me, if you continue that up, I'll take you to the end of the game. I made it to the end of the game. All right, last question. Next season, they're bringing two players back for redemption from the show. If CBS calls you, are you going to go catch a flight? Go to the next location tomorrow? It would, be, it would really depend on a certain set of circumstances that are going on in my personal life, but um, I would definitely welcome the opportunity um, at some future date to play Survivor again. Would you play the same way? Um, no, it would depend on, well, let's put it this way. I don't want to say no. I would say again, it, it, it's group dynamics. If I went there and the person they brought back was another person who played, you know, uh, say if I played in the game with poverty, okay, and I was there, and everybody else in the game were young guys who adored poverty. Well, guess what? I'll be that guy again. Because they're not going to look to me. They're going to look to poverty, most likely. All right. Last time, we're the last group on the red carpet. What are your final words to the fans tonight? I love you. Thank you so much for supporting uh, Survivor. I hope that you will go out and register on the Diane Fossey uh, site tomorrow and make a donation of whatever you can, one, two, five, twenty-five dollars it's for a worthy campaign. I would hope that they go do that. And I just want to say to my family, um, my eldest sister, my son who could not be here at all because he's at a school getting a 4.0 average right now, uh, boarding school through this whole process. I love him. I love the fans. And I'm so grateful to have had the opportunity to participate in this with CBS and uh, Mark Burnett Productions. All right. Thank you for everything, Philip. Very nice to meet you.